Hey Virgo, welcome to your tarot session. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to dive right into your reading. Make sure to like, subscribe, join the family. Thank you in advance for that. It really makes a difference. I appreciate it. Okay, Virgo. What's the general energy for Virgos right now in the present moment? Virgo. Eight of Wands. Okay. High Priestess, Five of Swords at the bottom of the deck. So your intuition is guiding you towards some type of change, but you're hesitant or there, there's certain worry underneath it all, underneath some type of action that you're taking or some type of change that's happening. I love, love, love the Eight of Wands so much because it's such a mysterious card. I would say even more mysterious than the High Priestess in its own way because there's no people, nothing on this card. It is an invitation to surrender. We don't know where the ones are coming from and we don't know where they're going, but we know something is happening. We feel it. We experience it. Um, and with the Empress, again, it's like there's a lot that you don't know. There's a lot of energies, kind of, you know, mysterious energies that are quite powerful. Um, and you're being held by that right now. Again, your nervous system keeps getting in the way and there could be a lot of ups and downs. The high priestess is connected to the moon, but I think that this fear or this anxiety around change is completely normal. The changes are not only external, but also internal. That's what I feel is happening for you. Internal and external change. Um, definitely taking place right now. And I can feel scary. I can feel scary. Okay, let's see what this is about. I need to know more. Virgo. Oh. Empress, Knight of Cups, okay. Empress to me is, you know, the perfect alignment, almost perfect alignment between the mind and the body. So your body has been reacting to change. You could be feeling stress. You could be holding your breath also. This is something that happens with the Empress. Um, I learned that from experience. This card comes up a lot when I need to just breathe. You know, I don't know if you've experienced about when I concentrate, I hold my breath for long periods of time. And then I'm like, what's happening with me? Am I anxious? No, I'm not anxious. My body is reacting to change. My body is reacting to stress. The Empress is connected to the body. But again, she's also connected to the mind. She's Venus and Libra. So this card is about receiving. We can feel that something's coming, Eight of Wands. We can feel like there's, it's like, metaphorically, it's like a package is in the mail. You have somewhat control over this, but timing, no. You don't control the timing. You don't control circumstances and whatever can affect the timing of this uh, change and whatever you're about to receive. The Nine of Cups here is inviting you to show yourself compassion. Always. This card, no matter what, wherever you see it, if you pick it for yourself, if you see it in tarot readings, it is always about self-compassion first. Always. I know this in my heart. I felt that the first time I picked this card and... I think it's it's a card that's very misunderstood because of old beliefs, but always about showing yourself compassion. And by doing that, by creating this practice, moving in the world with more compassion for others, it, it's starting to, it's like, again, it reminds me of the Eight of Wands. This constant give and take give and receive. The high priestess is the moon. So we have really the cycles of the moon, this 
uh, the ebbs and flow of the oceans and seasons. There's something very cyclical here coming up in your reading. And it might be hard for you to navigate because when you get very high highs, you already know that the lows are going to be incredibly low. I think that your, your mind prepares for that. Your body prepares for that. And you could be looking for some type of balance right now. Maybe your goal in the present moment is, I just want to be more stable emotionally and, and mentally. And for some of you, maybe physically also. There's this constant up and down. And I feel like there's something that's being kind of apprehensive. Like, oh, okay, I know that there's this quote unquote down period coming in. Now my body's reacting, my sleep's affected, my anxiety is um, kind of out of control is what I'm getting here. It's not permanent. And that could be an important mantra for you. And of course, it's easier said than done. Creating little mantras, it's not like it's going to be this miracle thing. But there's something about, again, this is not permanent. This is a new season for me. This is only one of the cycles of who I am in my life and the seasons I'm going through. We have the strength card. So we have double eight already. And eight I have been coming up a lot for Virgos. Again, I really feel like the transformation and the shift, the change for you is as internal as it is external and the strength card is our card of the year 2024 is a strength year it's very interesting how the energies at the end of the year are really starting to kind of be in our face we cannot ignore that and the work of the strength card is to of course work with our primal instinct um this primal energy of who we are and sometimes it could be about reclaiming our sense of adventure reclaiming our inner lights our inner fire it's connected to leo which is the fire that never goes out it's fixed fire so we are right now in this moment shifting from leo season to virgo season which is a, a shift that i love so much personally I absolutely love Virgo season, how we get shit done. It feels natural. I wake up every year on the first day of Virgo season and I just want to work. I want to be productive. It's like this natural shift. But we are still like in the very last bits of Leo season. Um, this fixed fire, it, it cannot be contained anymore. And it feels like you're asking yourself, what am I doing with that? What am I doing with this surplus of energy, this fire, this passion? You could feel exhausted right now. I feel like a lot of Virgos might be feeling a little lost or exhausted. Like, what am I going to do next? I feel like nothing is certain. I'm navigating uncertainty. I want answers. I want clarity. And now I'm just burnt out because my mind, my body, my soul, everything is activated. And I feel like the moment you step in your season, the energy is going to shift overnight. And I think you're going to sense that, um, especially your nervous system, which is, of course, connected to your body. If you've been having a hard time sleeping or feeling like even if you sleep eight Nine hours, if you're lucky, um, you don't recuperate. It doesn't feel like it. I think it's the, the fixed fire of Leo season that's just uh, playing with you in that way. Again, give yourself a few days after listening to this reading. I think that the energy shift is going to really feel intense, but calming. It's like, look at that. The Ten of Cups is here. We have the build up emotionally and now we have this new cycle at the heart of your reading, the Ace of Cups. So again, I'm going back to the Knight of Cups, which is carrying that cup here. Showing yourself more compassion. 
it's not easy for a Virgo. I've talked about this before and a lot of you guys connected. I received a lot of messages from the Virgos I interact with outside of YouTube. And people were like, yeah, I don't feel proud of myself. I don't really show myself compassion or kindness. I just know I have to do or accomplish something and I do it. Um, I think it's essential here that you come back into presence around certain feelings. Feelings that might be very hard to talk about. Feelings that might be very uncomfortable and raw, but there's something here that you are complete with. And it feels like through a conversation, this buildup of energy slowly dissolves. You know, Eight of Wands is a card of communication, kind of the foundation of this energy, how we can transform through receiving information and also letting information come out. And I think for you, it's all about emotions. There's a lot that you're keeping for yourself. 1111 here on the timer as I'm saying this. There's a lot of things that you keep for yourself because you don't want to be too much. You don't want to be the person who complains all the time. You don't want to dwell in certain feelings. You're very rational. You're very rooted in the present moment. So whenever you have to, let's say, think about your past and talk about it, for a lot of you, it feels like a waste of time. I would say, uh, especially Virgo sons, it's not easy for you to go back and dive into the past and clear out certain feelings. And you're like, but what's present now? Why would I bring that up? Why would I obsess over something that doesn't exist anymore? And you are right, definitely. <laughs> but there is something here that is coming up to the surface it wants to be externalized. It requires you to either share it through a conversation or it could be writing, poetry, um, any type of anything that connects to words, putting words on something. And don't be afraid to sound negative. I've talked about this in the past, for sure. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite songwriters of all time, Towns Van Sant, he, he was asked a lot in interviews, like, why do you always write sad songs? Why do you always talk about such sad things? And it really stayed with me when I heard his response. He was like, well, when I talk about the sad and dark stuff, I kind of put it in a corner. I get it out of me and it helps me see the beauty. Look at that. The sun is here. It helps me identify like a lot easily what's beautiful. You know, what isn't dark? What isn't ugly? The light really. And I think that's what's happening with you. And Virgos, a lot of you are amazing with words. A lot of you are great songwriters and poets. And um, you are the hermit in the tarot. You don't always share your magic. And you don't always share your words necessarily with the world. Because you do it in a humble way. You do it uh, kind of to stay alive, really. Expressing yourself in whatever way is valid. But again, you do it from a humble place. I think that is the key to tap into that self-compassion. To tap into this uh, vulnerable part of yourself which wants to be explored. And we, you know, we all grow from our vulnerable sides. We really do. Just like trees, humans, we grow from the soft part, from that vulnerability. And I think that... There's something that you kept for yourself. Again, you don't want to be annoying. You don't want to dwell in the past and all of that. But growth here is inevitable. And it comes from that vulnerability. Five of Swords is here. So five is a number of change. 
and swords are about the mind and this card wanted to come through early, earlier i always see like the five of swords as a card of someone planted a seed of doubt in your mind someone made you feel a certain way and you absorb that something that all humans do this is how the brain is made we remember the critiques we remember all the negative things that were said to us and the thing with virgos is that you also have that inner critique that is so loud so you can get lost in that okay I absorbed those critiques in the past and then I have my own. So where is the light? Again, can you identify the darkness, the ugliness, what's been hurting you, what's been keeping you up at night? Just to name a few you know, ways to express what I'm trying to say. Can you put it in a corner and maybe it will help shine a light on what matters to you the most what actually is beautiful in your life it feels like you're needing a little reset around that my friend and it's okay the ace of cups is at the heart of it all how cool is that i love the ace of cups but if i'm being totally honest it's the cup the ace, sorry, in the tarot that challenged me the most. There's a reason why the cups is overflowing. It's, it's too much sometimes. It can feel like too much. It can feel like we don't deserve this. It's too good to be true. It's too much. Again, I don't want to address certain things. I don't want to talk about those things. The way I'm feeling it intuitively is like every time you talk about your past or something negative or scary, or it feels sticky. Like it sticks to you for a few days and you're like, oh, I'm, I don't want that. But I think that there's this final push here around that with the Ten of Cups, which is going to be very beneficial for you. Look at that. I have the Page of Swords and Queen of Pentacles. So initiating something through communication, getting curious about certain feelings. And it feels like you are invited to create a new practice, something that you could do on a day-to-day, -day. something very simple. Again, it could be creating a mantra, creating a writing, journaling practice. It feels like you are there in your journey to start something again also for some of you it could be a practice that you already had in the past you were already kind of nurturing this practice and then you stopped and when you think about it you're like yeah like mentally i was doing a lot better when i was practicing something the queen of pentacles and all queens in the tarot are about nurturing something again there's a practice on the day-to-day -day and the mundane something that i feel connects the body and the mind um i don't know what it what it can be there's so many things coming up for me right now like the first thing that came up is like uh singing while doing the dishes or listening to an audiobook while doing the dishes or going for a walk uh, again breathing just there's something again that wants to connect your body and your mind it's just it keeps coming up and it feels essential again think about um ask yourself get curious around what practice were you cultivating in the past that actually helped you mentally physically spiritually there's something that just I think you're going to completely start over and fall in love again with something that used to be a part of your day-to-day. -day. Or maybe something that you got curious about in the past. It, it wants to revisit you again. And again, I'm hearing practice, but it could be so many things. So, okay. I want to know more about the Sun card. I want to know more about the Ace of Cups. The Strength card and the Sun card are connected. 
I do feel again like Leo season has been a lot for you. This burnt out energy is coming up quite strongly. And I want to know where is the sun leading you? Okay. Seven of Cups. So you've been waiting, waiting on something. We have two sevens here. Is there another card wanting to come through? Virgo. Oh, okay, the devil card. Okay. Underneath it all, the Empress. I love it. It feels like underneath the stress and, and the fear of something. Also, it could be like, quote unquote, bad habits. Underneath it all, there's so much beauty that wants to come out. Um, but again, I think that you've been waiting on something, waiting for change, waiting for the final response or the green light around something that you want. Seven of Cups and Seven of Swords. It's been very annoying for you to wait on that. Virgos, you hate, hate waiting. In, in my experience with Virgos, you guys know what you want. You just want things to be done and clear. Check out of your list. Um, the thing is that with 7-7 seven, seven energy, and please don't shoot the messenger. Um, this really comes from a place of love. But I feel like when you get what you want, it's very hard for you to stay in that great, grateful, uh, present headspace. Very easy for you to say, what's next? Or to start maybe complaining or critiquing, like finding negative things about this thing that you have a green light on finally. So again, I'm going back to the, the Knight of Cups. I feel like this card should never be overlooked. It is one of the most powerful cards in the whole tarot. Um, again, very misunderstood energy and very overlooked it's never about other people. It's always about us. At the end of the day, this, again, practice of compassion, gratitude, presence, all these things that we constantly talk about in the spiritual world, it's very important for you, Virgo. It is incredibly important for you. You should not ignore those practices. It really makes a difference. Again, Try to get curious and remember, okay, the last time I got what I wanted and maybe some of the things you have now in the present moment, you once dreamed of or you manifested those things, whatever it is, it could be as simple as the awareness that you have right now, your mind, your alignment, your spiritual practice, just Again, your awareness, it could be something material. Are you cultivating this, this practice of gratitude? Are you still looking for more, looking for what's next? Or obsessing over the details, which can be so good. I love that you guys are critical, but sometimes it can be to your detriment. There is something here that is beautiful in the present moment clearly but it's not that you're not seeing it I just don't feel like you appreciate it as much as you should and I'm saying this as a friend and the devil card is here and the devil card is amazing nothing evil about this card this is about old beliefs and the chains what are the chains the old beliefs Toxic habits, uh, negative self-talk. What are the chains that are holding you back? I really feel like with this eight, eight energy, again, the sun, the ace of cups, all of those cards are really saying you're moving past what's been holding you back, Virgo. But it's still a practice. It's still a work in progress. It's not like you're going to snap your fingers and be out of this headspace fully. Um, cultivating that inner stillness, cultivating, again, something. That's why the Queen of Pentacles came through. 
So you are moving past, again, what's been holding you back. You're consciously completing some type of emotional process. But it is a practice, and this is one of the bigger message of this reading. You're not done. And you're going to be reminded time and time again by the universe, by your guides, by your soul, by the tarot, that you need to come back to the present moment. It feels like the universe is handing you this Ace of Cups. It's right here. And you're like, oh, not sure. Not sure if it's my style of cup. Not sure if I still want it. Not sure if it's going to make me happy. But you manifested it. You wanted it. Now it's here. Moving past what's been holding you back. A personal issue reaches resolution. Makes a lot of sense. Again, Virgo season is going to be amazing for you. I can feel it. Uh, September is such a big month. And... Also, your birthday, for a lot of you, your birthday is going to come in. And that's the thing with, you know, people that are very cerebral. It's a good thing to get older. It's a good thing to celebrate your birthday because it creates this temporal landmark in your mind. And it gives you this boost to kind of start over. It's like you give yourself that permission. Like, okay, let me embrace that new beginning. Let me embrace change now that I'm celebrating a new year. And of course, not everyone watching is going to be celebrating their birthdays. If you are a Virgo rising, moon, Venus, you're all welcome here. And I feel like you can use this next Virgo season to your advantage. Again, this is it. This is your new beginning. You don't need to wait for anything external, any type of green lights, any type of okay. You are in it. You already move through what's been holding you back. So again, I would say get curious and don't be afraid of talking about certain feelings. Don't be afraid of Getting vulnerable, as cheesy as it sounds. I know a lot of folks talk about that and vulnerability is like this. It feels like a new word that everyone talks about. But to practice it is not cute. It's not fun. It's not easy. There's nothing comfortable in doing that. But this is where we grow from. So it will be worth it. I'm sending so much love, Virgo. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I can't wait to celebrate, y'all. I can't wait for Virgo season. Um, so much is happening in September. And uh, I might do a few extra reading just for you guys for your season. So, yeah. Make sure to like, subscribe, join the family. And I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye.